You got the supporters, of course, but you also got people out there that just want to see you fail. How do you deal with the haters? I appreciate the haters. I need the haters. We need them. Man, that don't bother me. Absolutely. They I feel like they make me go harder. Like they give me, they they my reason. You feel me? It's like God. We gotta turn them up to believe us. Without them, a lot of this stuff wouldn't work. You feel me? Like uh, respectfully, just keep hating and just keep watching. Yeah. Yeah, this sound nice right here. This a vibe right here. <laughs> I got 99 problems and the bitch ain't one. She got 99 niggas, why she think that I'm blunt? Stay blowing up my line, telling me I'm the one. I don't trust nothing, baby, this shit for fun. Yeah, this shit for fun. I don't trust nothing, baby, this shit for fun. Yeah, yeah, this shit for fun. I don't trust nothing, baby, this shit for fun. Yes, sir, Ski. It's your host, Killbody, and it's the Hood Analyst Podcast where we talk about that real hood. Shh. Yep. Like, subscribe. Y'all know the deal. We drop the videos, the full videos on YouTube every two weeks on Friday. And we got Instagram, TikTok, all of the social medias on lock with the shorts. We drop them every day, multiple a day. Y'all know what to do. We got two special guests today. One y'all met before, the other one. He here for the first time. We got Honcho Kai. Yes, sir. And Loco Krim. Yeah, Just yeah, us the league. Yeah. We Just back, us the baby. Lead, man. Just us, man. You already know. Bro. Absolutely, absolutely. You can introduce yourself again if you want, Honcho. And uh, after that, Loco Krim, you can introduce yourself. Where you from, your IG, and all that good stuff. That's your boy, Honcho Kai, a.k.a. Mr. Drippy, a.k.a. Sticky, creating the vibes in your city. You already know the deal, man. Uh, Y'all already know what it is, man. It's your boy, Loco Krim, man. Man, we here, man. Just us to leave, man. You know I mean, shout out to the hood analysts, man. You already know the vibes, bro. We here. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so we're going to go this way. I'm going to ask you a question first, you, and then if it's a question I feel like I want to answer, I'll answer it myself as well. All right. How do you feel about, well, let me, let me bring that back. Where are we from? You got the supporters, of course, but you also got people out there that just want to see you fail. How do you deal with the haters? I appreciate the haters. I need the haters. We need them. Man, that shit don't bother me. Absolutely. They I feel like they make me go harder. Like they uh-huh. give me, they they my reason. You feel <laughs> me? It's like God, we gotta turn them motherfuckers to believe us. Mmm, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Loco? I'm saying, man. Ch- chime in on bro, you feel me? We definitely need the haters, you feel me? Without them, a lot of this stuff wouldn't work, you feel me? Like uh respectfully. Just keep hating and just keep watching. Right? Yeah, you know the, the haters, lives. they don't even know. They secret, they're not even secretly. They openly pushing your name out there. Exactly. They in the crib like, damn, fuck this nigga loco, yeah. da-da-da. <laughs> telling they bitch, they bitch gonna follow them. And come on, man, we we know what it is. Y'all, y'all doing right if they here. Yeah, yeah, y'all doing a great and, job. And it's a couple of... Couple of y'all out here already done told y'all bitches, man, don't listen to loco crim, man. You heard? But you already. Keep, keep going, though. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> How did you come up with the name Honcho Kai? Uh, I came up with this name in like fifth grade. My original name was like the Sneakerhead Kai or some shit. Okay. And then like, I ain't gonna hold you, one of my favorite rappers, Quavo Honcho. I'm like, right, I'm a fly nigga too, so I don't know. It was just a wave and then I just stuck with it. Got you, got you. I like the I like the um the way Honcho sound and definitely Kai, because like I told y'all before, I'm some anime nigga. I be watching Dragon Ball Z. That should just remind me every time I see the name on my IG or I hear the name, it just I be I be like, yeah, I like that. Yes, sir. Loco Krim. How did you come up with that name? That's a uh that's a pretty unique name. I've never heard anybody have the loco in front and then yeah. the crim, I have no idea what it means. So could you uh, elaborate on that? I uh, definitely so me growing up as a young buck, you feel me? My grandparents used to always tell me, like, yo, I was crazy. I used to be doing crazy things. You feel okay. Me? So uh that's where the loco part came in. And the crim part is like, you know, some street shit, you feel me? Like I ain't gonna hold you. Like I was I used to be involved in a lot of criminal activity. You feel used me? Like, to. He used to be. You feel me? Not anymore. You know what I mean, it's just straight music, strictly music. But the loco and the crim part. You feel me? But respectfully, before the loco crim, my name was Loco Bands. You feel me? I ain't gonna hold you. The Bands. I was him. I was that guy. I'm still that guy. Hold up, take it you know back. I mean? You was Kodak before Kodak, though. Well, respectfully, yeah. 
Me growing up young. Oh, all right, all right. You was my Kodak before was Kodak. Wow. Mr. Kodak, you feel me? Mr. Kodak eight four three to be exact. You feel me? Heard you, heard time. you. Um, for the artists out there, for the upcoming artists out there, I've changed my name multiple times. Obviously, they've changed their name multiple times. You gotta keep on elevating, keep on growing, keep adapting. One of them gonna stick. One of them gonna be uh, it's just gonna be easy to say, easy to uh, to look up and all of that. And I think both of them got some two unique names. It's real dope. Don't um, get discouraged if you can't think of your name right off the bat, cause exactly. I'm pretty sure all your favorite artists have changed their names yeah. multiple times. For sure, for sure, for sure. That I think I asked you this question the last time you was on Kai. So if I did, you could pass or you can answer again. How did growing up in the hood? affect your life? Um, honestly, like I said before, it did and it didn't, you feel me? Because I was never in the way, mostly out the way, you feel me? I grew up in a good environment, so the streets, the hood, like, it's around, but it's like, it's like obviously, like it's a bunch of bullshit, so it's like, we ain't gonna go that way. Okay, I got one more question before you answer it, Loco. Mm -hmm. I'm similar to you. I'm around the hood. I'm I'm from the hood. But do you think that it's avoidable to avoid trouble or just being from a city where, like we from, Patterson, where shit go down every other day? Do you think it's inevitable that you're going to run into some shit or do you think that it's avoidable to avoid the streets? That's for me. Yes. Shit. It's a little bit of both because sometimes that shit could just come find you. For real, for real. you could be like, I don't know, it's iffy. Like, you could try to stay out the way and some bullshit will still come find you. Like, Absolutely. So, I don't know. I agree with that because bullshit definitely found me and I was trying to stay all the way out the way. <laughs> Loco, like how saying, has yeah. growing up in the hood affected your life? I'm saying it affected me in certain ways, you feel me? Like I said, I used to be in a lot of criminal activity, but, you know, me growing up, getting older, you feel me, I started seeing what, life was really about, you feel me? So, like, respectfully, it changed me in a way. And then again, it didn't change me in a way. It kept me on my toes, you feel me? Stand 10 toes at all times, you feel me? Mm -hmm. and, and that's how you got to live. Okay. I and also feel like it make you smarter. Like, yeah. growing up in the hood, like, it make you smarter when you go out other places, like, yeah. you feel me? You looking at everybody else that never went through what you went through, and you just like... Hmm. It's so many ways that I could scheme and plot if I wanted to. I could finesse this yeah. person. I know how to talk to this girl. Like, it's just so much easier when you've been from the bottom. Like, yeah. if you really wanted to go crazy, you really could. But you got that in your back pocket. Yeah. Definitely being around people that's not from where you're from. Anywhere you at. Yeah. Do you believe more people use other people for their own benefit or... Do you think it's more people on the planet who who just support and don't want nothing back from you? I feel like there's more people that use people for their benefit because if there's more people that just wanted to support, everybody would be what they need to be. You feel me? It'll be no man left behind. Mm. So that's how, that's my that's how I think about it. So you're saying the world is big enough for everybody to win. Everybody just needs to support each other. For sure. Oh uh, yeah, that's it's a fact. The world. They know that the world is. is Way bigger than us, way bigger than this. You feel me? Like, I mean, like, I don't know, man. It's just people do use you, but uh, we ain't gonna get into that. You feel me? Just, just for the upcoming artists and anybody else, just, just stay on your ten. You feel me? Just, just keep going. You feel me? People Absolutely. gonna support you, and people not gonna support you. Absolutely, loco. How did you get into rap? What made you wanna rap? Me growing up young. I grew up, uh, I was born in Patterson, New Jersey, you feel me? At a young Likewise. age, I moved to uh, South Carolina, you feel me? Me growing up in South Carolina, the music scene is like big, major down there, you feel me? Like, you got artists, Gucci Man, you got artists, Young Jeezy, you feel me, T.I., artists like that, you feel me? Like, and I always was a big fan of music. My favorite artist was Lil Wayne, you feel me? So, me growing up, I'm like, damn, I want to be like Lil Wayne, I want to rap, you feel me? So, me just making beats at school on the table, I me? I started off just making beats on the table. You feel me? Let my friends rap because I ain't know how to rap. You feel me? If I put words together, that shit sounded like some bullshit. You feel me? Absolutely. As time progressed, it. You feel me? I just I just kept going. You feel me? And it's just like I right, bet. Like now I went from making beats on the table. Now I'm making music in my on my phone. You feel me? Sidekicks, all of that. You feel me? I'm writing notes on my phone. Like now I want to rap. 
Then eventually, I got to that studio and my first couple of tracks, not gonna lie, sh shitty, you feel me? But that didn't stop me, you feel me? Because I knew that's what I wanted to do. Absolutely. You got to be persistent when you come to this game, man. Cause exactly. Same with me. My first couple tracks, I think Kai said it on the last interview, his first couple tracks, it's always going to be like that. You're not going to be perfect when you first start. Don't get discouraged. Keep going and see if you really got a knack for this shit. Yeah. Bullshit. Honcho. This word is thrown around all the time, especially where we from. How do you define being real? Uh, honestly, I can't define. It's just, it's either in you or it's not. Like, it's either you cuff or not cuff or you're not. Like, your actions will speak louder than your words. So if your actions don't say you real, then you're not real. Absolutely. Because anybody could say they real, but how do you, how do you know you real? Like, exactly. You don't know, so. Absolutely. Loco, how you feel about that? How would you define being real? What's your definition of being real? My definition of being real is just staying, staying solid when when the pressure's on. You feel me? Like that's how you stay real. You feel me? Like you gonna see who real when when you at the bottom. You feel me? Not when you at the top. You feel me? Everybody could be real when when you in this position and you you higher than everybody. Oh oh yeah, he real because he got this amount of followers. Oh he real because he got this amount of money. Oh he real because these certain people want to hang around. You feel me? Nah, like. Real is when you at the bottom and and and, and your people's got locked in together. You feel me? Absolutely. Um, I like the point that you brought up. A lot of people think being real got something to do with something outside of themselves, materials, um, followers, all shit like that. They think that you real when you got that shit. But as soon as you lose that shit, the realness gonna go away right with it if that's what you put your confidence in. So, I like what you said too, Kai. Your actions got to speak louder than your words, not only to other people, but to yourself. If you wake up and tell yourself, I'm going to go to this job, do this, hit the gym after, whatever it is, and you don't do none of that shit, you're going to look in the mirror and you could try to tell yourself you're real all day, but your soul, your spirit going to know you lying to yourself, bro. You got to you gotta get back right. For sure. Oh, what would you say? is your biggest motivation in life, your why. And it doesn't have to be for rap or for the feels that you in. What's the reason that you wake up in the morning and keep going? Not for not. At first, I was always looking for my reasons. I ain't really have a reason. So recently, uh, my homie passed away and he, he had a baby by my aunt and he grown up without a father. Mm. So it's like, I know it's some things that I won't be able to teach him as pops were, but... I got to be there for him. And that's my reason. You feel me? He growing up without a father. He got to have somebody to show him something. You feel me? And I got, for me, in my opinion, I got to be the one. I respect it. I respect it. Loco? Sam, my motivation is, to be honest, like, my friends, my family. You feel me? Those are my number one motivations. You feel me? Like, I wake up to strive to be better because I got people that's looking up to me. You feel me? Like, respectfully, my little brother here right now, like, it's my biggest supporter right there. You feel me? Like, you feel Shout me? out to the local I, crew. Yeah, if I don't, if I don't, if I don't got that motivation, I know he ain't gonna be happy. You feel me? So I gotta make sure the people that surround me, they straight. You feel me? And we gonna be straight forever. Absolutely. Loco, I got a question for you. So you said you like Wayne, right? Yeah. I, I could rock with Wayne. When I was growing up, I ain't really like him, but mm -hmm. as I got older, I, I realized he he got he probably got the the best bars ever. Like, he could rap unlimited. So I got a question for you, since we might be in the same generation since you said Wayne. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about social media and the, the role that it plays when it comes to artists? So with Wayne, he came out before social media. You remember that come up. You remember the MTV videos, the 106 in Park and all of that. If you could choose... Would you want to be from that era where it was no social media and you just came up the old school way? Or do you like this social media thing and building your own fan base and having an independent route and uh, being able to connect directly to your fans? Which one would you choose if you could choose? To be honest, it's up and up with both, you feel me? Uh, like growing up in that time, like I believe it was better because you feel me? Like you can actually get out there and broadcast your music, you feel me? Like, oh, I can 
go on the streets hand in hand or I can yeah. go to this place and sh- actually show my face. Where nowadays is all you got to do is get on Instagram, click and post. And now you're going to see like who really active with you. You feel me? Like, I don't know. Like, uh, it's a it's a toss up between it. But if I would say not for nothing, like I would take the old school route. You feel me? Like I want to be outside more actively. You feel me? Absolutely. Yeah. Like, so- Instagram is just like how they said, man, your Instagram a lie. You feel me? Like. A lot of Instagrams be lying. Smoking so, man, mirrors. Yeah, it's just smoking mirrors. Yeah, it's a tool to to get the the ends that you want. Um, yeah. And I respect it. I understand it. But it's nothing like coming up, going out, selling the CDs out your trunk. I remember them right. days when, yeah, it was artists that I that I um really used to be listening to just because they was outside hustling. Like, you had to right. really get your name out there. It was much more of a grind. And that I, brings the hustle, part of me, for cutting you off. That brings the hustle out of you, you feel me? Like, right. back then, you feel me? If you ain't no hustler, then you wasn't going to survive in that time. And also, speaking of rap, you had to be nice. It's not about, it wasn't all about the image. It it was some of it. Like, you know, Wayne had the tattoos. He was skateboarding a little bit. But at the end of the day, that nigga could rap his ass off. If you wasn't nice, nobody cared if you were selling CDs out your trunk. You had to be nice. You had to be good. How you feel about that, Kai? Because I know you're a little bit younger than us. Yeah. What about you? What's your perspective on that? Uh-huh. Te- teach us some shit if... Uh, if we acting like old heads right now. Nah, honestly, <laughs> I prefer to go back in the back of the days because this new social media shit is a blessing and a curse. Mm. So, like, like you said, like, back then you had to hustle. And it's like, back then, you could be independent and run up them racks. Now, I feel like it's a little bit harder. You got the streams. You barely making money off your streams and the social media. So, if I could go back shit, and be in y'all time and make music, I'd be going back. Yeah, that'd, that'd be that'd be Because that's where the real money at. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like you could go out your trunk and sell your music. Like if I sell to my whole neighborhood, I'll probably go shit. back home with at least five hundred dollars. It's gonna take not for nothing. It's gonna take some months now to make five hundred dollars off your music. Yeah, you gotta really have an establishment. You gotta have a certain amount of followers. Like I said, it's 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 not all the way fake, but it's like a fake nigga could come in the game and portray being real. And Facts, look at 6 9 <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, I got one more question when it comes to rap for both of y'all. Um, let's say two. Two artists that's up, established in the game that you listen to, that you look up to. Who would y'all like to work with and why? It doesn't have to just be their sound of music. It could be the the person that they portray on IG. Maybe you really feel who they are through the screen. Give me two artists each. We can start with Loco, and then we're going to go to you, Kai. Say my first artist, not for none, respectfully, would be A Boogie. Mm. Second artist, hmm, that's kind of hard. It's kind of a little toss-up, but uh, I'm going to say if I could, if I really, really could, Jigga J, you feel me, Jay-Z? You feel Absolutely. Me? Yeah, we got to show love to the, I don't even want to say old school. That man changed with the time so exactly. much. He could drop a song today. I don't care if the young niggas fuck with it. I'm going to fuck with it. He always had gems in his music. We're going to speak it into existence. Hopefully one day, Loco, you can work with Jay. Yeah. You can work with A. Kai, who would you like to work with? Uh, Wabi and Adele. Mm, okay, all right. Good, good, good pick. Good. All right, um, I know a lot of the young niggas love them some YB, and I understand it. He he's real transparent on the tracks. His vocals are Crazy. out of this world, so I I, I could see why you would want to work with him. But Adele, can you uh, elaborate a little bit more on why you would like to work with Adele? Adele, I don't know. I just been attracted to her and her music since like a kid, though. Like she got an angelic ass voice, and. How many other people gonna say that rap they wanna work with Adele? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yep. I'm yeah. tapped into a different side, like right now. I'm on I'm on a different type of time. Absolutely. Um, with that being said, before we get into the fun questions, is there other other are there any other genres of music that you guys enjoy listening to? Um, Kai, you can go first and then Loco. Uh I'm into pop. Uh mm. I ain't gonna lie, I'm into all type of music. I don't have no specific genres, like any other type of music other than rap I fuck with. And do they inspire you when in the studio or you just listen to it to get away from hip hop? They inspire my life. 
Got you, got you. Loco? Respectfully, I ain't gonna hold you. Damn, I'm a fake old head, you feel me? So I can sit down and listen to some Marvin Gaye, you feel me? That, 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 that type of music, like, you feel me? I could put that on, put that on and, and, and think about some... Think about some shit real quick and then go in the studio and just cook up some shit. Okay, all right, all right. I'm a I'm an old school type of guy, so I mean I like that type of music, but I don't got no, you feel me? Like no certain genres that I don't listen to, you feel me? I'm open. I'm open to all genres. Same here, same here. I listen to house music, yeah. R and B, yes. pop, reggae. I listen to it all. The only difference between y'all two and me, when I listen to those genres, I they 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 take me away from rap. I I escape in those genres. Rap, I've been doing it for so long that it's kind of like work. Anytime I listen to an artist, I'm always automatically writing bars in my head or thinking of <laughs> the beat in the pocket. Like it's it's yeah. work for me all the time. So when I listen to other kinds of music, it's like I could be free. I could just relax. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, y'all sound like y'all got some good heads on y'all shoulders. Kai, I already met you, Loco. It's great meeting you. Appreciate that, my brother. It's time to talk about these females. Y'all know these females is out here. They, they, it's a different age. It's a different time. We're going to give y'all the male perspective about how we feel about y'all so y'all can upgrade y'all game and, you know, keep the man around that you want. You don't want him to just pull up and hit it and quit it and, and dip and not text you for three weeks and you on IG and you chatting and subbing. Nah, we trying to tell y'all how to keep us, right? Sensational. <laughs> <laughs> so, for the first question, should a man take dating advice from a woman? You what? Kai, you first, Loco next, and then I'm going to give my answer. Uh, sort of, kind of, yeah. Because she's telling you how to keep a female. You feel me? She's telling you what a female like, what a female want, need. You feel me? I take their advice to a certain extent, but I ain't going to take it fully. You feel me? Mm -hmm. It'll help some, right. in some way. You feel me? That's a good point. That's that's a good point. I disagree, but I, with the last one thing you said, that was a good point. Loco? I'm saying it's, it's, like, it's a toss-up between that two. You feel me? Like, I could have some things that I like and then female can have some things that she may like, you feel me? So I would listen to her and kind of take bits and pieces from it. But uh, like I bro said, you feel me? Like, I know what I like, you feel me? So if, if, if you're not on my wave, then see Sayonara. you. Sayonara. <laughs> I hear bye -bye. that. I hear bye -bye. that. Okay, okay. Me, personally, I don't think that a man should take advice from a woman when it comes to dating because... Most of these women don't know what the fuck they want. They they don't they they say this and they say that. I just go by their actions and what they do. And usually they be like, uh, oh, don't worry about this guy, but then they fucking with that guy. Oh, I don't care about money, but then they fucking with niggas that flash money. Uh, you don't gotta take me on in days. We could just stay home and watch Netflix. But then when you do that, she start complaining about blah blah blah. So I think they just say stuff to sound good, mm -hmm. but the actions always point in the other direction. But but I'll give y'all one instance where I would take advice from a woman when it comes to dating. If she got that ring on her finger, if she has a ring on her finger and she's married, then I'm all ears. I'll take advice because you got a man to stay with your ass. So, and lock down your ass. So you, you probably got some, some good game. I didn't even think of it. Smart. Next question. Actually, this is a lyric. I don't want to get it wrong. Loco. I got 99 problems in a... Ain't one. She got 99 niggas. Why the fuck she think I'm dumb? Talk to him. What, what mental state were you in when you wrote that lyric? Actually, explain the lyric and then what... Explain how you felt when you wrote it. Because I'm cause I i, I I'm rocking with that. Hey, man. Listen. I have my, few, my fair share of ladies in my life, you feel me? And uh, respectfully, these bitches ain't shit. <laughs> Keep it on it, man. I'm going to tell you, man. They'll tell you they love you. They'll tell you they do this for you, but they really got 99 niggas. You feel me? Like, and I'm not dumb, you feel me? Like, I'm very smart Talk like, when it comes them. to these females. You Talk feel me? Like, them. I see shit a mile away. So don't think that I'm dumb, you feel me? Like, I'm him. 
I'm number one, you feel me? And it can't be 99 other ones. Absolutely. Either you're going to pick me or you're going to pick them 99 niggas. So Absolutely. You're going to pick them. See you later. Once again. Agreed, agreed. Yeah, I really rock with that lyric. When I heard it, I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is this is what's up. I like this. That's we need this ring. track. Yeah, we need this track. All right. How do y'all feel about Instagram letting you buy the blue check for, I think it's $14.99 a month or something like that? How do y'all feel about that? Kai, you can answer first because before... When you had that check, when IG first came out, it, it it proved that you was official. You you was either in some sort of field, playing ball, rapping, a doctor, whatever it was. When you had that check, that was your stamp. But now you could buy it for a monthly fee. How does that make you feel, Hancho? Uh, I feel like, I don't know, like, I feel like if you didn't earn that shit, you corny as fuck if you go buy that shit. Because now you're just chasing the status. Like, I know a nigga with 10K bought the fucking badge and gets 10 likes. <laughs> what are you doing with your life, sir? Like, what are you chasing? Like, Yeah, it just know? looks stupid. It like, just niggas is chasing status buying that shit. How even, about... Pardon, so even LeBron said if he got to pay for that shit, then fuck that shit. Yeah, I agree. LeBron, LeBron James said it? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shout out to LeBron. He on the same type of frequency as us then because I feel the same way. Loco, how you feel about it? Respectfully, you are not real, man. <laughs> keep it, keep it moving, man. If you Dude, bought that check, yo. If you bought that check within these past, like, what, how long has this been going on? A couple weeks. Just unfollow me now. <laughs> like, bro, just, just unfollow me, bro. You're fake, bro. Like, respectfully, I'm not buying a blue check just to say that I'm real. You feel me? Because whether you know me in person, not in person, from the social media, I'm real. You feel me? I'm real. He you blue feel check me? in real life. I'm, Absolutely. I'm, I'm definitely. I'm him. So Absolutely. I don't I need no blue check. I think IG just did that for a money grab. Another way to get some more money because any monthly fee, you get 100,000 people buying that and paying every month. That's that's a that's a nice bag right there. So I, nice I think that's why they did it. You know, IG is a free platform and you can make money off of it. So I'm pretty sure they like, look, we need to make some money too. So that's probably why they did it. But IG, that was lame. Yeah. Corny. I think I asked you this question already, Kai. So, Loco, we're going to go with you. Two situations. You got your shorty, your girl, your ride or die, and then you got a shorty that you just been seeing and dating or whatever. How do you feel when your shorty asks you for money and then on the opposite side, how do you feel about a girl that you just seeing here and there asking you for money? Boy, ain't no way, boy. <laughs> Ain't no way, man. Ain't no way. Respectfully, I'm not a nigga that be giving out money. You feel me? I'm gonna keep it a hundred, bro. I gotta keep. Listen, I got family. You Talk feel to me? Him. Like I, I like to take care of myself. Respectfully, listen. It's cool. We go out on dates. It's cool. Want to go on a trip and cool. But me just openly, handedly giving you money when you need it or when you call and tell me like, oh, I need this. I need. Nah, it's not gonna happen like that. You feel me? Like. And I've been in a relationship for a couple of years, you feel me? Like, it's, it's it was kind of like up and up, you feel me? Like, ain't no, like, you just going to call me and just say, yo, loco, I need this money. <laughs> nah, it's not happening, you feel me? Like, you can't do that, you feel me? Like, we could, we, we could, do, we could do other things. Like, just don't call me for no money. Say less, say less. Who gets bored faster in relationships, men or women? Kai. Uh, I don't know. I get bored fast. Mm, I ain't okay. gonna lie. All right, all right. Respect. Bored of uh, the whole relationship or a certain aspect of the relationship? Uh, see, I ain't gonna hold you. I'm a slut, so I get tired of laying up next to the same <laughs> bitch every day. Like I feel you. I'm the same yeah. way. I'm the same <laughs> way, Rudy. I'm the same way. Loco, who get bored faster in relationships, Shit. men or women? Me. Me. Just me. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it on bro. Like... The first argument that you want to you wanna bring up, like, I'm tired of you already. You feel me? Like, I don't give a fuck. We was together for five hours and you wanted to argue. Oh, see you later, baby. I ain't going to hold you. Like, And they be starting arguments over the dumbest, dumbest stuff, things, too. Like, things, bro. Like, right why now? you put that plastic fork in the sink? You know it's supposed to go in the trash. And I'm sorry. I just had it. And I was eating my food and I put the dish in it. Why are you arguing with me? Why you ain't go? Like, yeah, you can exactly. play. Like, go throw it away. Like, right now, like, I ain't going to hold you. I play a lot of GTA. You feel me? I be RPing a lot. You feel Heard me? Like, you? And this is like, I be RPing with the females up there, and you feel me? They want to argue about shit on the game, you feel me? Like, that's not me, you feel me? You could call me on the phone for nine, 10 hours straight, and we won't argue, but you want to RP. Like, you want to argue about some shit that happened on the game. Like, 
You're not doing that, you feel me? Like, <laughs> yeah, that I'm shit is lame. I'm bored with you already. Like, go ahead. See you. Where your friend at? That shit is lame. If you could think off the top of your head, I know it's going to be mm, a little bit difficult. Both of y'all. Whoever answered first can answer first. What's the funniest thing that you've seen in the hood? Oh, man. I done seen a whole bunch <laughs> of funny shit, but... You feel me? Ah, oh, man. I ain't gonna hold you. It gotta be these custies out here, bro. I, yo, I was thinking the, the same like, thing, and I don't want to laugh. I don't want to laugh, but come on now. Bro, like. I've seen the wickedest <laughs> shit in my life, bro. Like, I've literally seen a customer get his drugs, walk out the door, pull his pants down, oh. and shit. Like, bro, you can't be that serious, bro. Like, that shit is not real, bro. Like, we outside. That's wicked. That's... You feel me? Like, damn. Like, you couldn't wait? Yeah, that shit's crazy. Nah. They be playing limbo, walking up oh, and down man. the streets, Broadway crazy. Bro, they I like seen, the new zombies. Yeah, I seen, I seen a person that, legit, how you just said limbo, like, <laughs> How can you see it? What's in front of you? You feel me? Like it's crazy, man. Patterson is crazy, man. I ain't gonna hold you. Yeah, I love it, is, it bro. I love it, and it made me who I am. But yes. yeah, it's very, very, very crazy. Yes, no, for sure. Um, let's see, let's see. Okay, you got your shorty, you got your girl. Y'all been established or whatever. Let's say three years. You know. A lot of the women want us to be transparent, want us to be vulnerable. And I advocate for men is some things that you just got to keep to yourself, even if you with a shorty for a very long while. Is there anything that comes to mind when I say, what's something that you would never tell a woman? Anything come to mind. Never tell her. Even though you know you love her, you've been with her. Is there some things that you just got to keep to yourself? Mm, yeah. Like, I never tell a woman that I'm financially fucked up. She'll try to use that against me. Facts. Oh, my goodness. Like, talk that talk. Keep going. Keep going. Let them know why. <laughs> Please let them know why. Just because, like, uh, you, tell, uh, you tell a female that you financially fucked up, she going to look at you like you're fucking crazy. Like, you're <laughs> automatically just supposed to have this money. Like, <laughs> shit happens. You feel me? Like, and then are uh, you financially fucked up? She gonna look at, she gonna text that group chat. The group chat girl, girl, go fuck that nigga with the money in your DM. Mind you, I don't got it right now, but I fuck around be up next month. But talk you already picked your choice. Yep, talk to him, talk to him, loco. I ain't you gonna got, hold you, that was, that, that, that was. I'm right, yeah, too, I'm man. right with him too. That's, that's it right there. That's probably the yeah. only thing that I can't tell. That was know, right there. I bullshit. even got that shit in the lyric. I was down <laughs> bad and my bitch ain't even know. You yeah. can't let them know that yeah, shit because no, they no. look at you different. Oh, for real. Right. I got a question for you though. All right, oh, get right. Oh, yeah. Get right. How y'all feel about a polygamy relationship? Do you think women... Think you a hoe for one that shit, or is this some woman that's really ready for that shit? It's women out there that's definitely really ready for it. I just think that most women don't know themselves enough to know that they would actually enjoy that. In a polygamous relationship, you get another friend, you get half of the chores and cleaning and all that shit cut in half. Sure. And let's use like a Chris Brown. They go to a concert and there's a thousand other bitches that want him too. So y'all already kind of polygamous. It just depends on who the nigga is. Mm -hmm. So that's how I feel about it. I do believe that it's women out there that just don't want to share. And they probably, they got that itch in their body or in their heart where it's like, I can't see my man being with another woman while he's with me. And I understand that. But I think it's a lot more women on this planet not admitting or just don't know themselves enough to know that they would actually enjoy a polygamous relationship. Sure, That's man. my answer. I feel like you could get rich off that shit. I could build an empire off that shit. But what? they don't look at it like that. Yeah, they yeah. look at it. Oh, you just want to fuck another bitch. Yeah, uh, that's all they. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, all they're looking yeah. at. Kind of do. That's true. but <laughs> we could we could build something. And also too, that's when you're gonna get the most honesty out of your man because if you just lock him into that monogamous one on one relationship, he's gonna fantasize about other women. He's gonna exactly. eventually take action and end up cheating. But if you give him you and another girl or whatever his appetite is, you ain't got to worry about all of that. He's going to be completely sure. honest with you. He's going to be like, yo, you don't feel like fucking right now. I'm going to just fuck with 
her right here, and she, you know who it is. Y'all, right. y'all can all go get checked, and it, it's cool. I, I, I rock with it. I would like it. Um, I would, I would introduce my girl to that concept when she's ready, if she's ready. I'm just saying, if you into that, I mean, you know how to contact me. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Do you think most men on the planet are polygamous or you think that more men just want one girl and that's it? Uh, I feel like most of us are, but we don't even bring that shit up because, you feel me, like, females, like, they're going to look at us as cheating. Why you need another bitch for? What am I not doing that you that you, that you you want another girl? It's not that you're not doing enough. It's just like... like we want to have fun. Yeah. Right? Nah, for me, it's that they ain't doing enough. <laughs> they ain't doing enough And I don't know I'm I'm pretty sure There's a lot of men Out there like this too But I got a A high libido I got a high appetite And sometimes I just be so tight When my girl hit me With the I got a headache I'm tired I just be like yeah. Bitch I wanna go Fuck somebody else Because <laughs> What the fuck Are you on How you gonna lock me Into a relationship Where it's just me and you And then hit me With the I'm tired Like yeah, Nah can't do that but they don't be doing enough. If you feel like if you wanted those shorties, you better go find your girl, your guy, another girl that you trust, that you rock with, that you get along with, that can handle the things that you don't feel like handling at the time. That's yeah. it. That's how I feel about it. Respect yeah. How do y'all feel about girls from New York? You know, the ones that oh, man. use gang and bro. And do y'all find that attractive or not at all? <laughs> not at all. Uh, that's crazy. I just recently went through uh I had a friend, you feel me? Like, we was just friends, you feel me? Nothing more, nothing less, you feel okay. me? It's just all that bro and gang shit and, yo, word to my mother, yo, suck my dick. And it's like, That's bro, why like, y'all was friends. Like, bro, like. Because she talking like that. Yeah, yeah. I, at first, it was kind of, it was cool, but it's like, eventually, it gets tiring. It's like, bro, like, I'm not word to your mother. I'm not, no, I'm not your bro. I'm not your gang. You feel me? Like, we cool, you feel me? Like, we talk, we Communicate, you feel me? And it was on the level of just music, to be honest, you feel me? It's just, they take it too far, you feel me? And, and they feel like they bigger than everybody in the world. I'm going to keep it 100. Mm. If you're from New York, period, you feel like you're bigger than everybody in the world. And it's yeah, not the case, you feel me? They got huge egos from New York. Yeah, yeah. I, I can agree with that. And, Sensational. Um, I feel the same way. I don't want my girl saying gang and bro and... SMD and all that. That is like a super turn off. And all of the girls that want men to change and adapt to liking that, y'all are going to be single forever. forever. Because it ain't, <laughs> it ain't happening. It is not happening. So we're going to wrap this up real quick. All right. Are there any last thoughts that y'all want to give? Kai, Loco, y'all were great guests. I would love to have y'all on anytime. Oh, before we get out of here and y'all give y'all last thoughts, Kai did a very generous uh, gesture. He gave us the t-shirts he got going on right here. I'm yes, it's, I'm a vibe. I'm definitely going to be rocking this. Well, make uh, sure you turn it around for them. They got oh, the QR right. oh, code. He got the back. QR code. Yeah, scan them. Yeah. Very smart. Very uh, business savvy right here. I was not thinking like this at all when I was a rapper. So, uh, I respect it and I definitely appreciate it. Any last words from you guys? I just want to say for the ones that counted us out, we back. Justice the League here forever and we ain't leaving. That's a fact, man. Just stay tuned, stay positive, and stand 10 toes to everybody that's watching, for the people that's upcoming and that's going to come on the show. You feel me? Just just don't give up your dreams, man. Don't don't give up. You feel me? Just, just keep running. You feel me? Like, like how bro said, for y'all that counted us out, we back, you feel me? It was just, it took a little time, all took a little break, you feel me? But we had to get everything back together, you feel me? Like, sure. and the music is here, the videos is here, and just, once again, stay tuned. Yes, sir, Ski. Yeah. It's your host, Kill Body. This is the Hood Analyst Podcast, where we talk about that real hood like, subscribe. Y'all know what it is. Got in that mode. Stay there at that mode. A hey, body, body, men. Get your body count up. You know women like the men that could uh, attract other females. If you like females, um, attract more females. And women, keep your body count low. It's going to be dudes out here that will mess with you, that will fuck mm -hmm. you and duck you. But if you keep that body count low, they have no other choice but to respect you and maybe wife you up. So you never yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. We out. Okay. <laughs> Sinner on dreams. <laughs> <laughs>